Gluten comes from the Latin word which means glue. It is a group of proteins called prolamins and glutalins, which occur with starch in the endosperm of various cereal grains. This protein complex supplies 75 to 85 percent of the total protein in bread wheat. It is found in related wheat species and hybrids barley and oats, as well as products derived from these grains, such as breads and malts. Glutens, especially triticeae glutens have unique viscoelastic and adhesive properties, which give dough its elasticity, helping it rise and keep its shape and often leaving the final product with a chewy texture. These properties and its relative low cost are the reasons why gluten is so widely demanded by the food industry and for non-food uses. It is also used in cosmetics, hair products and other dermatological preparations. Gluten can trigger adverse inflammatory, immunological and autoimmune reactions in some people. It can produce a broad spectrum of gluten-related disorders, including celiac disease in 1-2% of the general population, non-celiac gluten sensitivity in 6-10% of the general population, dermatitis herpetiformis, gluten ataxia and other neurological disorders. These disorders are treated by a gluten-free diet. A person with sensitivity to gluten might experience abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, headaches, and fatigue after consuming gluten. Eliminating gluten from the diet may improve these symptoms. Celiac disease is different from gluten sensitivity. It is an autoimmune disorder in which an intolerance to gluten can damage the small intestine, leading to intestinal damage, poor nutrient absorption, and physical pain. People with celiac disease can't tolerate gluten, not even small amounts. Just 50 mg of the protein, about the amount in one small crouton, is enough to cause trouble. In people with celiac disease, gluten triggers an immune response that damages the lining of the small intestine. This can interfere with the absorption of nutrients from food, cause a host of symptoms, and lead to other problems like osteoporosis, infertility, nerve damage, and seizures. However, some people with celiac disease do not have any symptoms. In the last century, celiac disease was diagnosed by a process of elimination. Today it can be identified with a blood test for the presence of antibodies against a protein called tissue transglutaminase. A biopsy of the intestine confirms the diagnosis. After being confined to health food stores for years, gluten-free foods now show up everywhere. Supermarket aisles abound with products proudly labeled gluten-free, and many restaurants now offer gluten-free options. Also lately it's become hip to go gluten-free. Based on little or no evidence other than testimonials in the media, people have been switching to gluten-free diets to lose weight, boost energy, treat autism, or generally feel healthier. So, is it beneficial gluten-free diet, even if you don't really have any sensitivity? Or is it a new fashion in healthy population? For healthy people, gluten-containing foods are well tolerated and digested. Part of the confusion comes from the magical properties of a gluten-free diet, anything from weight loss to boosting immunity and energy. While there are anecdotal reports of success and going gluten-free changed my life, these are personal stories. No science supports eliminating gluten from your diet for health reasons, unless it can't be tolerated. However, if you believe that a gluten diet will be harmful to you, gluten may start hurting you. This is explained by the nocebo effect in medicine. A nocebo effect is said to occur when negative expectations of the patient regarding a treatment cause the treatment to have a more negative effect than it otherwise would have. For example, when a patient anticipates a side effect of a medication, they can suffer that effect even if the medication is actually an inert substance. The complementary concept, the placebo effect, is said to occur when positive expectations improve an outcome. Both placebo and nocebo effects are presumably psychogenic, but they can induce measurable changes in the body. One article that reviewed 31 studies on nocebo effects reported a wide range of symptoms that could manifest as nocebo effects including nausea, stomach pains, itching, bloating, depression, sleep problems, loss of appetite, sexual dysfunction and severe hypotension. 
If you're determined to go gluten-free, it's important to know that it can set you up for some nutritional deficiencies. Fortified breads and cereals have become a major source of B vitamins. Although breads made with white rice, tapioca, and other gluten-free flours are becoming more common, they are generally not fortified with vitamins. This can be a problem for anyone, but it's especially worrisome for women who are pregnant or may become pregnant. They need vitamin B9, more commonly known as folate or folic acid, to prevent birth defects. Taking a gluten-free multivitamin multimineral supplement is a good idea for anyone trying to avoid gluten. That is why it is imperative to consult with experts for a gluten-free diet. Otherwise, basic vitamin deficiencies may occur. Finally, I would like to share some data for the gluten-free foods that we constantly see on market shelves. The gluten-free food industry has grown 200% from 2015 to 2019 with almost $22 billion in sales in 2019. Interestingly, studies show that people who do not have celiac disease are the biggest purchasers of gluten-free products. Consumer surveys show that the top three reasons people select gluten-free foods are for no reason, because they are a healthier option, and for digestive health. For those who are not gluten intolerant, there is no data to show a specific benefit in following a gluten-free diet, particularly if processed gluten-free products become the mainstay of the diet. In fact, research following patients with celiac disease who change to a gluten-free diet shows an increased risk of obesity and metabolic syndrome. This could be partly due to improved intestinal absorption, but speculation has also focused on the low nutritional quality of processed gluten-free foods that may contain refined sugars and saturated fats and have a higher glycemic index. Many people determine their level of gluten sensitivity by trial and error. If it bothers you, eliminate it. But please you don't make this an obsession. Never forget that the healthiest life is hidden in nature. Take care of yourselves. Our next video will be about the religion of Zoroastrianism. Who is the Zoroastrian who Nietzsche mentioned in his book? Stay tuned. The sources of all the information said in this video are given in the description section. Please comment to make corrections or additions. If you still have not subscribed, you can subscribe and like the video. Take care yourself. Ciao ciao.